So this is the DJI Osmo Action and everybody has been going absolutely straight up cray cray about this camera and rightfully so. I mean it's a beast of a camera and it's awesome. But hold up there just because this is newer and shinier than the GoPro Hero 7 Black does not necessarily make it better. As a matter of fact if I could only have one of these cameras I would definitely go for the Hero 7 Black. Not saying the GoPro is better than the Osmo but for my personal use there's a list of reasons why I would prefer the GoPro. Oh, and Skillshare is in the house sponsoring today's video. So if you want a chance to win one of these cameras, then make sure you stick around. I'm gonna assume this is about the 19th video you're watching comparing these two cameras, but just in case you haven't been in the loop, let me try to fill you in as fast as I can. <gasps> Both have touchscreen displays on the back, but the Osmo is a little bit bigger, so yay, one point for Osmo. The Osmo has a little display on the front, which is small but useful. No, it is not a touchscreen, so stop poking at it. The GoPro has a status display up front, but I don't think I've ever looked at it, so it might as well not be there. Design wise, they pretty much look the freaking same. I've picked up the wrong one so many times, it's annoying. Pretty sure DJI was like, hey, let's just copy GoPro, but change it just enough so we don't get sued. But even though they look the same, they do not fit into each other's housing. But you can mount the Osmo housing onto the GoPro mount because they share that loopy circular crisscross thingy which is good news because you probably already have a whole bunch laying around your house and you should probably start organizing them. I also recommend these screws that you can tighten with a tool so you can stop feeling bad about your dainty little fingertips. Both give you stabilized 4K up to 60 frames per second and up to 240 frames per second in full HD, hell yeah. You're probably gonna leave these cameras on automatic settings but you can always switch it into manual if you're trying to get a little bit kinky. Uh, I don't think I used that word right. Both have replaceable lens protectors which is useful for when you break them. Oh my God not necessarily explosion proof. Polar Pro also makes all kinds of filters for both of these, so check them out. Both cameras can be operated via voice command, and on both cameras, that's the first setting I turned off because I would rather just push the button. Start recording. Start recording. Start recording! Both have built-in time-lapse options, but the GoPros will stabilize your footage in hyperlapse mode. The Osmo does not come out stabilized, but I think that's coming in a later firmware update, I believe. I'm not sure though. They both have very mediocre internal microphones, which sounds fine, but if you're trying to vlog, I would definitely recommend an external microphone. But to do that, they both require an adapter that will awkwardly dangle off the side of the camera. I recommend getting this thing that slides onto the top of your GoPro case. It holds that little adapter thing and holds that microphone up top and high, which is nice so that your dead cat fuzzy thing up top will not get in the frame of your camera. Links in description and finally there's price. The Osmo is 350, the GoPro is 400, but you can usually nab it for the same price as the Osmo. Oh my God, look at all that haze. Anyways, that was a mouthful. Are you guys as exhausted as I am after that? Why don't we take a little breather and let me tell you about Skillshare, our sponsor for the day. Skillshare is a mozzarella, stop digging. You're kicking up all this dirt, bad dog. Oh, are you tired? Okay, I'm sorry I yelled at you, buddy. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands and thousands of courses about technology, business, design, photography, videography, writing, calligraphy. I think that's a skill. Yeah, that's probably on there. And once you sign up for a premium account, you have access to everything on there, which is awesome. It's like a buffet of informational courses. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be you on information right there once you sign up. And luckily, you can sign up using my link down below and get a two month free trial. Peter's enjoying the buffet too. That's grass though. Harry got you some premium food at home and you're just gonna go in and eat that. You get to indulge in courses like iPhone videography or low budget filmmaking. It's a completely risk free trial. So go give it a shot. You got nothing to lose. So thanks again. And Skillshare for sponsoring this episode and making this giveaway possible. I'm sure all you guys are excited about that. I still can't get over how much that haze is moving. Look at that. So we're starting to lose the light here. So let's try out some low light settings. So I'll just say it, neither of these cameras have good low light. Treat them like little babies. As soon as the sun goes down, put them to bed. They do look a little bit different in the dark though. The GoPro, I think just starts to look really mushy and all the detail gets kind of lost. The Osmo looks digitally sharpened, but along with that comes a lot of digital noise so sometimes one looks better than the other but yeah no so far it actually sounds like the Osmo has the advantage here right because they almost sound like the same camera except for the Osmo has this front-facing display so why do I still want the GoPro a little while back the GoPro kicked up some dust when they announced the hyper smooth everyone was like oh my god it's so smooth and then now we have the DJI's version
version, which is rock steady. But one thing to keep in mind is that both of these are EIS or electronic image stabilization. It's not optical image stabilization. It's not on a tiny gimbal. It's not IBIS, it's electronic image stabilization. So these cameras film and capture shaky footage, right? And then there's a gyroscope in each one. So as you move the cameras around, the gyroscope tells the camera, this is how the camera moved. And with that information, they go into the footage and adjust the picture to look stabilized. I would say that this has a little bit more of that digital stabilization, but it comes at a cost. And that cost is a massive delay on both these screens when you turn on Rocksteady. And I imagine that's because it takes a little bit of time for the processor to stabilize the footage and then display the screen, but it's a bad delay. The GoPro right here is pretty much immediate. Every time I move the camera, but you see on this camera is a delay. So I turn and then it catches up. I turn, catches up. Boom. Look at that delay, that's horrible. And in my opinion, the last camera you wanna have a big lag in is an action camera. Like if you're filming a motorcycle zip past you and you're focused on this display back here, you're gonna miss that action. You're gonna be a whole second behind and you're just gonna be catching the trail of smoke. By the way, there's not that much of a delay with Rocksteady off, but again, we're probably gonna be leaving that Rocksteady mode on most of the time because that's why people love this thing. But with all that being said, does the DJI Osmo have better images stabilization than the GoPro, I would actually say no because of this app called Real Steady. If you guys happen to fly FPV racing drones, you probably already know of it because that's what most people use to super stabilize, super fast drone footage. And about five years ago, before I even started YouTube, I bought their full After Effects plugin because they have great image stabilization. That was a bit complex, but Real Steady came out with Real Steady Go, which is specifically designed for the last few generations of GoPros. And remember how earlier I was saying there's a gyroscope inside of the GoPro that records all the movements of the camera. That way the processor knows how to counter some of that shake. What's awesome is that gyroscope data gets recorded onto the GoPro file. So Real Steady Go accesses that data and uses that information to further stabilize that footage. And yeah, it is a whole nother software that you have to put it through. So it's gonna be more work and it's a little bit pricey. I believe it's around 99 bucks but is it worth it? Now on the left is GoPro footage completely unstabilized because you actually have to shoot it that way in order to use Real Steady. And on the right is the DJI Osmo Action with Rocksteady. So obviously that Rocksteady is gonna look a whole lot better. And now I'm gonna apply Real Steady and then all of a sudden the GoPro looks way, way more stabilized than even the Rocksteady. I would say the Osmo Action has a bit of an advantage over the in-camera stabilization, but if you want the best stabilization it's definitely real steady with the GoPro. And the real steady works with all these GoPros. It's not just the Hero 7 Black. Ooh, but one downside is that it doesn't work with 24 frames per second. You have to be either shooting 25 or 30 or above, which kind of sucks because I like shooting 24, but I heard that there's a thing that GoPros do where it drops frames once in a while. So it's unable to sync that gyro data with the video data and it becomes a little bit of a mess. If you are interested, there's a link down in the description that will give you five bucks off. And I do love how simple and straightforward that software is because literally you open it up, load a clip in and adjust how much smoothness you want. Because remember, sometimes you want a lot, sometimes you don't want that much. So you can slide that around, check out where it gives you just the right amount of stabilization and hit save. It's going to kick out a file that's super smooth. Now, the next reason, which is personally my biggest reason, is the fact that the Osmo Action is locked in at one field of view, which is a great view angle. And it's probably what most people would be be shooting in anyways but if I'm filming action like I'm wearing it on my helmet I'm filming action I'm snowboarding or whatever I generally want the widest angle I can possibly get a lot of stuff happens really close to you like if I have it up here I wanted to film everything that I'm seeing opposed to a narrow field I don't want to miss anything if you're gonna rig it somewhere like on a race car or something it's hard to mount cameras further away from the subject and there's probably gonna be times where you're gonna be be like, man, I need a wider angle. And the GoPro offers a super view mode, which gives us 
us a lot more information. They're both a little bit cropped in because they both have stabilization on right now, but even with both cameras stabilized, the GoPro is showing us a much wider field of view. So I love that. Of course, this is gonna be case by case. A lot of times I do just leave the GoPro on wide, which is very comparable to the Osmo action, but there are definitely times where I wish I even had it wider than the super view mode. So as someone that often wears it on a helmet or chest mount, I'm really, really happy about having that super view mode. And that alone is enough for me to say, I want that GoPro. Ooh, by the way, if you guys end up getting real steady, they recommend shooting in four by three, 4K at 30 frames per second or 25, because that gives you the biggest field of view, not just in width, but also top and bottom. And Real Steady will use that data and also de-warp it as well. And during that process, it scrunches everything in and will give you a nice 16 by nine finished product. And that's what I've been doing and it is awesome. Now let's talk about track record for a second. Now DJI, great company, I love their drones, but this is their first generation action camera. And GoPros, I bought my my first one back in 2010 to use it to get some unique shots of a short film I was making at the time. So they were making these cameras from even before then. So they have worked out a lot of the kinks that they ran into. They filmed so many crazy Red Bull events and monster, like all that crazy stuff gets filmed on GoPro. So they have direct feedback from people that are shooting all that stuff. And they've had the time to work out the kinks. And I have been impressed with the quality of this Osmo action considering that it's their first one but I've already run into some issues. Look at this clip real quick. Listen to my audio. See how off this sync is? This is absolutely terrible. Why is it doing that? When you record a big long clip, it doesn't just give you one huge clip. It divides up the clip into four gigabyte files, which is totally common. A lot of cameras do that, including the GoPro. But the question always comes down to, if you take those two clips, put them right next to each other in a timeline and play it through, will you notice that jump? Some cameras drop a few frames in between, so it skips a little bit. The GoPro does it perfectly and seamlessly. So no matter how many clips it's divided up into, it's gonna play through you perfectly fine. But this Osmo action on the other hand, as soon as it crosses over that mark, the audio becomes completely unsynced. It was off by about half a second. So I manually went in and synced it up. No big deal, right? But now you have this pocket that does not have any audio for half a second. And there is zero indications on the camera when it's about to split files. So you could be vlogging and all of a sudden you could just have a half second of just no audio. Again, I didn't notice this problem when Rocksteady is off. Off, but when it turns it on, it happens every single time. This could be another thing that is fixed in a future firmware update, but this is something that I noticed and it bugs me. Imagine filming a wedding. It's like, do you take her to be your lovely wife? And you just hear clapping. And of course, this is the GoPro. So many accessories, like this weird funky phone protector, which is supposed to protect it and also reduce wind noise. When it comes to image quality, they both look really good. In general, I do prefer the look out of the GoPro. It always does a great job making the skies look really blue and vibrant. The DJI also looks really, really solid as well. And I actually feel like it does better at filming people. Like I noticed my skin tones with the GoPro always looks a little bit bit mushy, so I gotta give it to the Osmo for that. But the GoPro also gives you HEVC, or High Efficiency Video Codec, I think, also called H.265, and I wouldn't really touch it if you have a slow computer, because it's heavy on your computer, but it does pack in a lot more data. Both have a flat picture profile, and I enjoy grading the flat picture profiles from GoPro. It grades very naturally, in my opinion. Decent alike is also nice and flat, but as a picture profile that's supposed to be very flat. It does have a lot of digital sharpening already embedded in there. The Osmo does also have this HDR mode, but first of all, Rocksteady does not work in that mode. So probably none of us are really going to be touching it. And I've also seen some weird things come out of HDR mode. So I'm probably not going to touch it. Overall, I think the Osmo action is awesome because it has that front screen. That's probably its best feature. And I loved having it while I was vlogging with it. But as a pure action camera, I 
I think the GoPro Hero 7 just has so many more practical features for what I want to do. So that is why I would still go for the GoPro Hero 7. Maybe the Hero 8 will have a front screen on here. Hmm? But here's the question, which one would you rather have? And as I mentioned, giveaway. To enter, easy. All you got to do is be a subscriber and leave me a comment telling me which one you would rather have and why. We're going to use a random comment selector. It's going to pick out a comment and we're going to send whichever camera you want to one lucky person. Well, I'm trying to test the battery life on these and both of these cameras have been recording nonstop for an hour and seven minutes. So they're both pretty decent on that front. Also, look at this. I could touch almost all of my face and this is how much I can straighten now. Oh, I cannot wait to have full arm control. You guys are lucky. If you could take your left hand and just like touch your face all over, you guys are lucky. I'm just I can only use my thumb. Let's close this off with a few comments from my last video, which was all about my new Asus computer setup. Top comments from Nadim. I'm a simple man, guy with an i9 and a P4000. You sir have a beast of a machine. <laughs> that is true. That Asus is wicked fast. I mean, very quickly turned my MacBook Pro into a computer I used to read comments and take little notes on. Damn, it's like an earthquake in your office. <laughs> As I need to stop leaning on the table so much. Just, hey, what's going on? I was trying to shake the table more, but this one's, I think this table's heavier. Sean says, I'm not sure which looks more over-engineered, Asus Tower or Potato Jet's robot arm. <laughs> I have a picture on Instagram with me filming with it, and everyone's like, that looks like it's part of the camera. Is that a follow focus on your elbow? <laughs> Anyways.